flight of uh, flight of fight or flight? Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as long as there's a homeless person or a person that's in, in that's deprived yeah. and abused perhaps, there I'm not safe. Mm-hmm. And this is something no one really thinks about. And it's no one's safe in this system in general because there's always because it divides everything up. Because there's always the haves and have nots due to the system, because there's always edges in the system. That everyone there's manipulative edges that certain groups can gain. It's inherent. It's inherently corrupt, basically, is the way I would describe it. So in order to combat that, in order to combat, say, someone that's going to rob you and hurt you, is which is simultaneous to combat the corruption of a ruling elite, it's in my opinion, you have to start altering the environment and altering the consciousness of the people. And to do that, people have to realize that they have to start contributing to the world at large in more of a communal sense. Mm-hmm. It can't be at all a selfish mechanism. It can't be survival of the fittest. It can't be, you know, you know, like the old Adam Smith free market ideology of, you know, you this you preserve yourself and everyone does things for themselves and therefore society will work out as a whole by some invisible hand, which is what he used to claim. And and I'm not putting down Adam Smith, there's a lot of things he good good things that he did say. I'm just using that as an example because he's one of these fathers of this free market system. Mm-hmm. And it's also related to all other forms. Yeah. It's not just the free market. I, I people think I'm just attacking capitalism. I've been working on this concept called the Zeitgeist Movement, which is an attempt at a grassroots conscious awakening environmental shift for literally the species, as ambitious as that might sound. You tend to find most movements are politically oriented, they're mm-hmm. regional, they're specific to certain things. I've yet to see something that really would attempt to unite humanity, and especially with a, an actual tangible train of thought, mm-hmm. not just you know hyperbole of idealism. Mm-hmm. So after the first film came out, everyone asked me, well, what do we do about these issues? What do we do about these problems? And I thought about it, of course, myself. The film doesn't give much of a first film doesn't give much of an answer to anything like that, except mm-hmm. at the very end mm-hmm. when I talk about consciousness in general, the need for people to realize how they're interconnected. Very quickly I denote that through uh, a few different personalities at the very end, which I actually pick up with in the new film. Through my research as I was approaching the new film, I discovered was a man named Jacques Fresco in a project called the Venus Project. Jacques Fresco is about 92 years old now. He's been working his entire life thinking about social design, thinking about something that you typically never hear about, Mm -hmm. where you actually design society to benefit society, as Mm -hmm. opposed to this kind of environment we're in now, where everything is just kind of a free-for-all with -hmm. with different levels of differential advantage. Everyone wants to sell something. Nothing really gets done in our current society unless money can be made from it. There are all sorts of problems, such as the fact that we think we live in a free society. Well, you might be free enough to step out your door and walk down the street, and you know, go buy things, but you're only as free as your purchasing power will allow you to be. Exactly. So, you know, it's really there's no such thing in a monetary system as a free country. It doesn't exist. So you're a, you're a slave to a corporate structure, basically, very simply put. Jacques Fresco, he presented new ideas to me that I had never thought about, and it took a long time for me to absorb, like I think a lot of people, when they first hear about these ideas, it takes a very long time for them to realize, because mm-hmm. they've been so indoctrinated into this sort of you know, freedom-oriented capitalist, co- capitalist connotation or free market connotation where they think that they associate freedom with the fact that they go and they can buy whatever they want. They can buy from, you know, they can choose from 75 types of cereal in a grocery store, but yet there's only two political parties in their country. Exactly. So they don't, there's a massive disconnect. That's crazy. Isn't and they it? have no idea that democracy is a complete illusion because in a true democracy, well, first of all, whatever a true democracy may be is actually to, to leave the question. Mm. But in our system, money rules everything. Mm. And all you have to do is look at any campaign across the world, especially in the Western world, to see that money and the financial support coming from financial backers, the financial industry itself, they put people in power that support the industry at large. The United yeah. States, for example, is just a large corporation. Of course it is. And just like the UK or anything And if else. people can't say that, then they really need to open their eyes Absolutely. Up. And that's one of the things that people don't really think about much, is the real problem of money itself. Mm -hmm. And this is what Jacques Fresco thought about. And in his final conclusions that I found, it it made perfect sense to me. It's that you can't have balance or equality or a world without poverty or a world without war or any of these sort of utopian Christian ideals that people think about in a very traditional sense. Like, why can't we have people living, you know, this and that? Uh, in a balanced, n- classless, you know, non-hierarchical, you know, non-elitist type of environment, why is it the elite always come to fruition? And to really figure it out, you, you didn't recognize that the biggest tool, the biggest catalyst of this is the monetary system, mm-hmm. because it perpetuates stratification. 
It perpetuates greed. It perpetuates poverty. It perpetuates scarcity. The monetary system creates scarcity because scarcity is rewarded. So you can never have a world of abundance. You can never have a world where everyone's fed because in such an environment, no one can make money off of it mm. inherently. Mm. So scarcity and deprivation is built into the system. Corruption is built into the system. You have to start designing society to benefit humanity as a whole. And scarily enough to many people in this fearful New World Order kind of environment mm. of people that think this way, you need a certain degree of technological world unification in order to do so. And when I say this, a lot of people say, whoa, that's like one world government. And if yeah, people think that's about been that, on a lot of people's lips, yes, actually. It has. They're but they very don't... scared about one, how we could go down that path. Sure, mm. but you know, there's, a, there's an inherent fallacy to these notions. You need world unification basically because the highest optimization of utilizing the planet would be an organization worldwide. So you have to move past this and realize that resources are really what's important. And until we utilize the resources and utilize our in intellectual creativity, which is what creates technology, which is really what everything is in regard to what helps us on a very utility-based level. You have to have people realize how they're interconnected symbiotically and then simultaneously realize that everything is emergent and changing. And those are two things that people don't recognize. The arrogance of religion is such where the, the people believe they're separate, they believe they're special, they think that they're they, they think that they're different for some reason than another than a bug or something. And the reality is there's no difference whatsoever. Mm. And but this is what they've been taught and this is our this is our primitiveness that perpetuates and keeps us divided, keeps us separated from nature. Because once you step back and realize how we're connected to nature, and again how we, well first of all you were connected to nature to the effect that Everything we do has a cause and effect, oh, and, so, and with yeah. each other and everything else and with the environment. Corporate pollution is unbelievable. They don't care about the environment. No, the, the, no one's realizing this. So when we realize that, you realize that in order to live in harmony with nature, you have to actually listen to nature, understand its processes, its natural laws, and align. Like, there's no reason we should do anything that's not sustainable. 75% mm -hmm. of most production is waste. So the, to make anything, it's just there's so much waste involved. Not to mention, for example, a computer is made out of materials that are only durable to the extent that the market system will allow for them to maintain market share. Mm -hmm. So the highest form of resources aren't utilized to make things like really long and efficient mm -hmm. because, because inherently they have to keep market share. Exactly. So things get more and more cheap. Break, everything's break meant down. To, today to break down. Planned obsolescence. And it's unsustainable. Unsustainable. In that case, and and that's yeah. very uh, very hideous for us because it, it has so many ramifications from the landfills to the exactly. pollution. So we're totally out of line with so nature. So the first thing that has to happen, I think, is that people need to realize that all operations have to be environmentally aware, period. Mm. And to, if you're in a position that it's not, then you're doing something wrong. Mm. And well, the system obviously is wrong when you step back far enough because you see that the system doesn't reward any of that. Mm. So I think when that awareness comes forward, yeah. for example, yeah. um, then people will begin to shift. And it's slowly happening, very slowly, unfortunately, because we're still paralyzed by the system.